figure it out from that end. So, um, you know, social media, um, I mean, it's just how I was raised. So it's, you know, I understand that, like, it's someone's job. So, like, I treat them with respect. That's just kind of how I was raised. You know, whether it's the CEO or the janitor, you know, they all get treated the same way. And uh, a lot of times when I'm being nicer to people, well, they're nicer back. Like Comcast, you know, pretty bad customer service. But, you know, I haven't had a bad experience because, you know, I talk to them like a decent human being and they treat me well. And that's just how it's always been. So um, that's another big thing, you know. Um, even going on, like, social media and doing it on social media, like reaching out about a ticket, usually, you know, that, that, that can help your case a lot as far as, okay, we, we got to grab the ticket number and see. Um, you know, that was big for the whole thing with Cripsy, you know, is having a social media presence and finding tickets that way that really need to be dealt with. But a lot of it's, you know, patience, um, and that's pretty much the big thing. Um, another thing is, you know, definitely to use 2FA. 2FA is a really big thing, especially when it comes to crypto. Um, your emails can be hacked very easily today. So, you know, that was a lot of what we would deal with at exchanges. You know, your email gets hacked and the correspondence say the password's changed and now your money's gone. And then, um, you know, the exchange is the one getting yelled at, but, you know, there was no 2FA. So I would highly suggest using 2FA on anything crypto, anything in general anymore. Um, you know, even Facebook. Um, what else would there be? That's great that you said the two factors in, because I literally just got into that. But to recap, I want to make sure everyone is aware of this. Um, you know, the three things that he covered are very important. If you if you listened, you heard them. You know, patience is a virtue. Be patient in this. Don't just don't don't FOMO and start throwing money at this because and, and not know what you're doing just because your stoner cousin is making money in your sister's basement does not mean that you're going to make money in your mansion just because you have more money to throw at it. You gotta really look into things. So patience is a virtue, and good customers get good customer service. So if you're having an issue with an exchange or with anything in general, keep your cool. You're talking to another person who's just doing their job, and you know you're gonna get good service if you're a good customer. And um, two-factor authentication is probably the most important thing that you covered. Honestly, um, this is, and he covered like you know how he said. Your, your passwords for emails are easily hacked now. And this is how people are getting your passwords for your emails. Sign up for this. Log in here. Do this there. Create an account for this. Third party that. Now when you're putting your username and you're creating a password, they know what the password is that you just used for that website. So all they're going to do is brute force attack every website on the internet with that same email and the same password you just provided. They know that that's probably a common password that you use. That's probably a common email address that you use. They're going to keep using that on every Bitcoin exchange there is until they log in and wipe you out. But if you have two-factor authentication on, your phone will get a message. It'll ask you, hey, is this a move you're trying to make? And you can deny it and you can take care of it. So definitely make sure that you check that out. That was that was great. Um, are there any other things that you could think of like that people should be aware of that, you know, like, you know, you're... The, the, the point of view that you have is pretty unique on like the uh, ticket uh, replying thing. So like some more advanced things that people may may need to know before they get started or maybe speak to the people who are already advanced and some issues that, that you see people that are pretty tech savvy still have. Um, I mean, tech savvy, like, yeah, you're going to still run into issues. You know, it's, it's, uh, they're programs, you know, bugs happen. So, I mean, it's really just putting in a ticket, you know, we, we appreciate it, especially, you know, reporting bugs for sure, um, you know, and just know that they're, they're being handled. Um, a lot of times um, we have to escalate things to a higher level, and then, you know, even sometimes that has to get higher, even higher to somebody else, you know, depending upon the severity of the issue, um, you know, so we, we do see all the problems, and once they're discussed, like, they're being worked upon very quickly to make sure that it's not going on again. Um, another thing with security that I would recommend, you know, as, as Ken was saying, you know, is getting something like KeyPass, where you only have to remember one password to get into KeyPass and then all your passwords. It helps you generate um, passwords and length, characters and everything for you. This way they're all stored there because you're not going to remember, you know, um, star hashtag shoe 15, you know, your ex-girlfriend's name, whatever. 
Um, you know, so these programs keep it all in, in there for you. This way, you're not using the same thing at every exchange, and those are being brute forced, like you said. So that's, uh, you know, definitely another big security um, to put on your computer as well. Um, Learn something new every day. I'm probably going to have to do that because my brain hurts when I have to recall passwords anymore. There's so many exchanges I'm on, and so and I know not to have the same password for anything. So, like, I have, like, a weird rhyme in my head per website to try to remember the password. Like, uh, like you know, people have, like, the f f whatever memory. They relate, like, the first word to, like, a, you know, a picture or, like, a food or something. So I have to try to do that with the exchanges because, like, all my passwords are different. And they're all pretty damn, like, long and difficult. And, you know, like, they some make you put in a, 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 a symbol, a character, like a quotation mark or a question mark or a hashtag. It, you know, so, like, the passwords they're making us choose now are getting harder and harder and harder to remember. So I'm definitely going to check out, was that Keep Key? Keep Pass. Keep Pass? Key Pass. Key Pass. Yeah. Key Pass. Definitely got to check that out, man. That's, that's going to save me because... I, I get the points where I'm just at like, all right, I'm just going to re reset the password. I'm just going to, I don't remember the password. I have my, my Gmail so or whatever email server I'm using, reset password, and then I go through that whole process at least twice a week for certain <laughs> websites. I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it was for me. I, I would lose passwords. And, like, I'm the same as you. Like, I was taught in school, you know, hey, what's, do song lyrics and then use, like, the first letter of each word and with, you know, numbers and mm -hmm. stuff mixed in between. So that's like how I remembered it, but even then, it's just like, well, I did a different variation of it this time, and uh, <laughs> so like I kept doing it, and it was, it was so simple. Hey, I only have to remember one master key password. It opens up this app, and all my passwords are there. And instead of having to create one myself, I can literally, hey, um, you know, this is Facebook, and generate, and I want it to be 15 characters with, you know, this and a capital letters and stuff generate and it's right there and it's safe that's awesome and is it like cloud-based so if like you lost your phone you can log into the app and just see all your passwords again as long as you have your login info i haven't checked into the cloud-based part of it i mean i have it both on phone and laptop so I mean, i've seen stuff like that and it, sometimes they're client side sometimes they're server side so just it's like they don't want like almost like how jax is they don't want to have access to your private keys or you know maybe key pass doesn't want to have access to your password so it's only on your phone so I want to check into that and see because, like, I'm, I'm one of those people who go right to, oh, what's the worst case scenario? So if my phone got wet and I don't know my password to, like, any of these, is it on a server or is it on my phone? Definitely. I'm a big worry wart. I, I feel like everybody should probably go to write worst case scenario when it comes to anything to do with your money or anything like that with security. What's the worst case scenario it could go to? And then from there, work your way back and make sure you're comfortable. So that was the first thing that came to mind when you mentioned the app was like, what's the worst case? And then I have to make sure that, you know, it's encrypted and it's not just on my phone. It's, you know, server side. Is it open source to make sure it's secure? And then I can use it. So I like to work my way backwards a little bit, but it takes, it's a, it's a, it's a much longer process. And I hate to go through the world with such doom and gloom on everything. But I've, I've been, uh, I've been had once or twice. Have you ever been, uh, scammed in this industry by anything in, in particular or ever, like, maybe looked at something and was like, this is awesome and it turned out to be a scam? Uh, I've, I mean, I've looked into things, but, you know, like I said, patience and so it hasn't happened to me yet. Um, very close. I mean, I've looked at a couple things, but, um, you know, I, I kind of escaped a lot of a lot of things by being patient and being like, oh, well, okay. You know, I'm, I'm not usually the one to do trial and error, you know, like even, uh, even when it comes to like my money, um, you know, my Bitcoin, like I, I store everything in my own wallets. Um, you know, I say that even for like when you're trading, you know, leave enough on uh, anywhere to where it, you, you're comfortable if, you know, something bad does happen that, Okay, it's not that big of a deal. Use your trades, daily trade, and then withdraw. That's what I've always done, you know, and will continue to do. Um, my new thing for trading would be Whale Club, which um, if anyone watched Billions, the show Billions, uh, you know, that's it kind of like got me into it even more where, um, you know, it's a really, really good website, so it's a different style of trading where, you know, you can bid on the price of Ethereum or Bitcoin either going up or dropping. And I believe the window time frame is like three minutes or something 
of that nature. Um, I forget all fame. That's awesome. It's like crystal ball gambling. Pretty much, you know, and that's uh, anyone that knows me, uh, you know, knows that I, I like my sports and, you know, teams and researching on sports teams and, you know, doing the occasional, uh, you know, betting in Delaware and uh, fantasy sports and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I was just a different market being able to analyze, uh, you know, the trends and everything and, you know, determining, hey, is this going up or is this going down? And um, I like that style of trading better. I feel like they missed an opportunity naming it fantasy trade, fantasy crypto or something. Then, because like that, I feel like that'd be more appealing. Um, so the whale club is like you said, it's like a uh, you bid, you bid on a price movement three minutes into the future of any of any cryptocurrency or just the two. There's uh, Dash is one of them, I believe too. There's, that would be so. Fun. It's not every one of them. I think there's only a couple of the main ones so far. Um, but like I said, I just kind of got into it uh, not too long ago, so. Um, I can't give full on answers, but you know. Um, but what you know of it so far, it's worth checking out more. You're gonna look into it more, probably throw stuff at it and play around. Absolutely. I mean, uh, before the ETH dump, you know, I was able to, you know, play around with it and you know make some money off the ETH dump um, when it dropped all the way to. Uh, well, it depends what exchange. Uh, it was like a penny on some, thirteen dollars yeah, on others. Yeah, it depends what exchange. You know, one forty or whatever, two hundred. Uh, Whatever it, it dumped, you know, at least you know, fifty, sixty dollars, uh, very quickly. So, do you mind segueing into maybe some people wouldn't know how that's even possible? Like, how does something like that even happen? Um, you know, from what I've seen on, you know, basically from being around and seeing, you know, the fall of uh, Mount Gox and, you know, unfortunately, Cripsy as well. Um, you know, Mint Pal. Uh, there's been so many exchanges that, you know, just went under. Um, when withdrawals are halted for any reason, you know, it could just be like, hey, we're upgrading our server. Um, you know, people panic, so they sell. And once, hey, oh, wow, it's jumped down already this quickly, more people are selling. You know, and then, you know, other people are like, well, now it's cheaper. You know, we see the opportunity of Bitcoin, oh, Bitcoin dropped to 2000 cheap Bitcoin, let's buy it, really. and then it went right back up, you know, it's uh, very patient, you know, um, being in the game, you know, buying it at 50 to to $100, and then quickly it jumped up to 1200 I think, about like a 